All right, so the first part of dimensioning, we covered uh, the ordinate dimension, linear dimension, a line, angular, arc length, radius, diameter, and ordinate. Okay, so now uh, in this part, what we are going to work with is uh, some of the more tools that you see down here, as well as some tools that you see down here. Now, I'm going to go back to my drawing and erase these. Now again, uh, you should remember how you work with ordinate dimension. You have to make sure that you move your object to the zero comma zero by using the move tool and only then your ordinate dimension would work right with zero comma zero being your reference points. So uh, I will just go, maybe I'll just go control Z to go back to where I was before and this is what we have. So <clears throat> let's see the next one I'm going to show you is baseline dimension. Now as the picture shows you get an understanding what baseline dimension is. It starts at a, uh, uh, at a certain datum or a cer certain reference line and then the dimension is taken from there. Okay, so I'll click on that. Now uh, it's asking me select base dimension. So before I get there, I'm just going to do one base dimension starting with the linear tool. Go click that one, this one, and I give it a location. Now when I go to the baseline dimension tool, see how it works. All I do is click on baseline. So it already takes the first one as the reference. So now I'm going to go to the next point, to the third point, to the fourth, and to the fifth. So if you look into the dimensioning, it started from the baseline, which is this, then it goes to 2, 5, 8, 12.5, and 15. So that's how baseline dimension works. I could even uh, go up this way, but again, I need to have one dimension to start with, and then I can jump to the baseline my location and then I jump to the baseline it already takes the first one as the reference then I go to the second one to the third one fourth fifth and sixth okay so that completes how we use the baseline dimension there's another tool that you see over here where it says adjust space now if I want to give more space between my dimension because I think the space is a little bit closer. I could click on that. Now it says select base dimensions. Click on there. Click on everything that you see. Hit enter. Now it asks me to enter value. I'm going to give one or maybe let's give 1.5 and enter. So you see what it did? It just modified that one because it didn't select this one, so I have to go one at a time. So it gives a distance of 1.5 between all my baseline dimensions. Now let's try doing it on this side. I go click Adjust Space, select Baseline, select those, hit Enter, and in this case I'm going to give 1 and Enter. So you see what it did? It gave a distance equi distance or equal distance of one for every dimension. So this one does the job. It, it's even dim space. You could use either or, uh, but that would give space between your dimensions. <clears throat> now uh, I could even try working with breaking my dimensions if I have an object coming in the middle. But so you can try working with that. I could give a quick dimension uh, by. By, I'm just going to erase these right now because we don't need it anymore. Let's go to the next one. It's quick dimension. I click on that. Now I have to give it a face where I click so it selects the dimension. All I do, click on the dimension, hit enter, and boom, give it a location. Click on there, click on the dimension, hit enter, and I'm going to give it space right there. Now what happened? It didn't show up. Click on there, enter, specify 
dimension position. Now my position is going to be right here. Okay. Enter there position right there. Okay. So that uh, does a quick dimension. Sometimes you want to have a quick dimension. You could always click on that and give it a quick dimension. Okay. This is a circle. You never use R. You always use diameter. So don't use that. So that was the quick dimensioning. We already covered the baseline dimensioning. If I go in here, there's a continuous dimensioning. Now, how continuous dimensioning works is, again, I need to have one standard linear dimension. And then I just click on the continuous one and see, it takes all of them one by one. Okay. Now the difference between continuous dimensioning and baseline dimensioning is baseline starts at a reference and then it goes from there. Continuous dimensioning doesn't start from a reference, it goes one by one by one, right? Uh, I hope you remember how the baseline dimensioning looked like. Maybe I'm just going to erase this and use baseline dimensioning over here. Baseline dimensioning for baseline dimensioning. I just give one dimension right now starting from the baseline which is this and then I hit baseline dimensioning and see it goes one by one. There, there, and there. These are the difference between baseline and continuous which is this one okay so that's what these two do and there are a couple more that we have if I ever wanted to update dimensioning if I change the dimensioning style over here and I want to update the whole dimensioning in my drawing I would be clicking that then we even have uh, like a dimension jog line so if I want to dimension something with a jog line, I would be using that as well. Like for instance, I already have a dimension over here. I just click on that, and where do I want my jog line? Maybe right here. Okay. This you would do if, for some reason, uh, you cannot put the whole length in your drawing, so you want to break your dimension just like that, so people get an idea how much your dimensioning is without this going all the way down there. Okay, so dimension, now this is going all the way, so I don't want it to go all the way, so I'll just do baseline, uh, sorry, dimension of jog line, click on the dimension and give it wherever I want my location, which is right there, okay. Now if I have this, I can always even get rid of this jog line by using the same exact tool, clicking on there then it says select dimension to add, jog, or remove. So in this case, I am going to type R space bar for removing it, and I just click on the jog line, and it deletes it. So you could use that for adding a jog line or deleting a jog, jog line. Now there are some more tools that we have that I would like to show. Now, one being the center line. Some, some of you guys would want to put a center line on the circle. If you draw a circle, there always circle has to be associated with a center line uh, because that's again is a standard. So I have to make sure that I point the center of the circle uh, anywhere that I see a circle in my drawing. So for that, I will click here. Then there's a tool called as the center mark. So all I have to do is click on that and then click on the circle. Click on that click on the circle. Okay? If I want to repeat the same command, what do I do? I just hit space bar, click on the circle, space bar, click on the circle, click on the circle. So that adds center point to ev anywhere and everywhere I have a circle. Now let's see what more do we have over here. We have uh, makes the extension lines or linear dimensions oblique. So I could even do a dimension, you know, for uh, an object where I would like to make uh, the dimension oblique. Enter oblique 
angle, I'll type 45 and hit enter. Okay, so see, it made the dimension line oblique. I don't know where you would use it, but that's how it works. So it's up to you if you want to use it or not, but I showed it to you anyways. Now, I could even change the text angle to whatever angle I want, like this text angle. Okay, so I click on the tool, click on the uh, dimension line, hit enter, or not hit enter, it's already asking me to specify the angle for a dimension. I specify 45 and hit enter. Okay, so see it changed the angle of the dimension text to 45. So again, it's really simple. All I have to do is go over here, click on the text angle, click on the dimension, and give it an angle. Maybe this time I'm going to give 30. Okay, so it gave the dimension an angle of 30. So there are a few more tools that you could see over here, which is justifying the dimension to the left, to the right, to the center. Like right now it's in the center. I will click the justify left and click on the dimension. See, it moved it all the way to the left. I will justify to the center or justify to the right. Okay, just like that. Or the best way to do it is without using any commands, all I have to do is click on to the dimension, click the center one, and move it to the desired location. Okay, now why would you do that? A lot of times your dimension might come close to the object or some other dimension lines, but you want to make sure that your drawing is clean and no one uh, can make a mistake by reading your drawing. And dimensioning is extremely important because if you have dimensions overlapping or lines are overlapping, it gets tough to read your dimensions and there's a big chance uh, during manufacturing someone reads it wrong and manufactures the part causing uh, loss of thousands of dollars. So you have to be extremely careful while doing the dimension. Make sure it's kept nice and clean. Okay, so there's one more thing we need to see is basically how to work with dimension override. Now, if you have a certain dimension, like for instance, I had a certain dimension uh, showing the radius as 5.0, and if I wanted to override it, I would click on that, and this window pops up, and there's something called as a text override. I can click inside, and I can basically change that to R10. Point zero, if I want it, and hit enter. So now you see what it did. Even though the actual dimension is five, I changed it to ten. Now this is dimension override. Uh, there might be a chance once in a while you might have to override some dimension, or maybe sometimes you even want to add something more to it. Like I would uh, want to go in here and add uh, what do you call it? some text as in uh, arc size 4 just an example okay so anything that I type inside gets overridden and you see it up here so once in a while you might use that tool it comes pretty handy so uh, I hope you understand how to use that all I have to do is click on that you get this window that pops up and then make sure you go you go down where you see what do you call it you see the text override where it disappears sometimes it's tough to get it in but it's right there there you go okay and then you type whatever you want and hit ok hit outside and that's what you get so that was dimension or text override I would say and again, you could use it in a number of different places. So there are a couple more things that I probably left out, but you could go and look into it and try to work with the dimensions. But I pretty much covered everything there is uh, to know how to work with the dimensioning, uh, talking about all these different dimension styles, talking about uh, the continuous and the baseline dimensioning, the, the dimension jog line, how to adjust the space, how to align your text or justify your text over here, uh, then how to put the center mark, change the angle of the text, and stuff like that. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. 
share my video, like my video, and comment.